we're staying nice and cool. We're staying hydrated because you need everything on your side for the treacherous terrain of Miramar. Certainly this deep into the tournament, the race for second place seemingly now all but locked in. But the two teams that were vying for it before have reduced the buffer that they had behind them. Plenty more at nipping at their heels. Yeah, Gladiators are sweating, essentially, today. And I think we, we had Kitsune over on the stage yesterday. If you didn't catch it, he had an interview with the beautiful Barney, uh, who was saying, you know, actually, look, we're not a day one team. <laughs> we're not even a day two team. We're a day three team. They always come in clutch right at the end. And yes, they stress me out because it is always very last minute. Um, but they're here now. And the last minute Andes, they're, they're bringing it through. That's the main thing. But the question is, and I mean, they talked about it on the desk, is is that good enough? You know, is that good enough for to a be second place, considered? Sure. <laughs> sure, I mean, maybe for a second place, sure. Uh, but you're looking at uh, coming from those PMPL regions where you're playing those longer form tournaments, you have that time to gain momentum. You need more power out of the gates in order to be considered a, a, a contender, especially when you've got someone like Vampire just sort of shrouding the rest of the lobby, right? It's kind of unfair at this stage to judge them against a vampire, but still, you do need a little bit more speed out the gate, I think. And so there's definitely things to work on there. Good news that they have managed to find a little bit of speed here towards the end of day three. Yeah, it's really important. I mean, you, you can pop off day one, you can pop off day three. It's it's just a bit more stressful on day three, <laughs> uh, but maybe that's what they like. Maybe they love the stress so much, which I cannot imagine. Goodness me, I would be very, very unhappy with that. The adrenaline pumping through my veins. I might need some of Defian's breathing techniques to help me <laughs> out in that situation, 100%. Keep it going, mate. From that last game, by the way, not only did Vampire break their total winner winner chicken dinner record of three, bringing them up to four now uh, in this tournament, which earned them 25K uh, USD, but they have now tied the record for top three finishes, which is a further 15K blank. One more top three finish from Vampire, and they just add to their prize pool. Can they, are they gonna win literally the entire thing? They won the most exciting walkout as well for another 10K there. They've got most eliminations. They're sweeping the whole board here. Yeah, the Vampire are just taking it all home. And I think it is fairly unbelievable uh, the rate at which they've picked up these prizes and these rewards, as you can also pick up those prizes and rewards from the 2023 PMWI crate. You've heard me harp about on it enough by now. So we'll get straight back into the game because this is our penultimate match before we will finish things off over on the final Miramar of the day on match six. It is practically confirmed at this, at this point that Vampires will be your champions of BMWI once again. But still, that second place is a huge amount of money, John. A huge amount of money. Yeah. 200K. The jump place. up is large, right? So I think these three teams at the top, Gladiators, A7, and 628, three very, very good teams from different regions. You know, they're all vying for it. And I think that if you, you were to ask people at home, you know, who do you think you should, should win? I think they'd be very divided. Uh, decisions there because I think there's a lot of fans of Gladiators, a huge amount of fans of A7. There should be some really big fans over the PEL for 6282. So I think that it's really anyone's to take at this point and Gladiators currently are on pace. But as the desk was saying, 628, they shine the brightest, blindingly bright, bright over here on Miramar. But then again, so do Alpha 7. And in fact, the last time there was a, a final circle with Alpha 7 against 628, we know who won. It was Alpha 7, right? They were able to claim that one. But only one game, and it's still, you know, could be, you could argue either way, but I still think Alpha 7 do have the chops for it. The time has long gone where Gladiators were considered, I would say, massively dominant when you consider this tournament on Miramar. Um, they have had previous showings here where they just absolutely swept the board. So hopefully they can channel that as well. Yeah, I think that when you look at that team, they are making some better decisions. Not the best decisions, um, but better than what we've seen before from them, which is a case of just those speedier rotates in that end game, just picking up the obvious spot a lot of times and fighting for it. You know, the smoke trains were a really good sign to me last game. They were looking for something more, even though it was just one player. The fact they were able 
to think to themselves, you know, let's challenge this. I think we have to if we want a really good placing in this game. They do go for it. It's slightly difficult for them here on Miramar because the distances are a lot longer. They have to make much more rotates, much more micro rotates on this map as well. So towards that end game, they might still feel a little bit of that just still feel quite uncomfortable making those end game rotates where it feels maybe just a little bit too scary to go for them. Maybe they're not confident in that crash to make that one happen. But they want that second place. They want that big jump up in cash. They have to go for it now. Similarly, 628, they just need to keep doing what they're doing here on Miramar, which is absolutely blasting off with just three players, of course. They do need those three players. The three player buff is real. <laughs> Hopefully, able to enact that here. Miramar stats for Vampire on the left-hand side of your screen. I think, what was that, 7 point, seven point something average elimination. So we talked about the prowess of 628, of Alpha 7, of, uh, of Gladiators as well. Vampire have just been chilling. To be fair, it's sort of a similar story just across the whole of this tournament, right? Yeah. So it's kind, of, it's kind of, as we said before, a little bit unfair to measure them up like that. Yeah, and I mean, I'm going to be even more unfair and do some more measuring because they All have right. 46 total limbs on Miramar. They have two lesser limbs than Tony K has total on Miramar. I think that's pretty crazy. Wow. Uh, honestly, I think that's really crazy. 33Z, though, getting taken down is uh -oh. a big deal. Three-player buff. Three-player buff is unleashed, though. They have activated at the cost of a player, though. This is good news for Alpha 7. Uh, joking aside, this is great news for Alpha 7 for their chase. This is good news for Gladiators uh, that 628 have lost one of their players this early on as well. When you consider their position, they are likely going to have to face a couple of pushes coming through from the teams out on this western side. So, I mean, losing that player severely, as we know, diminishes that strength, that power you can hold on that western edge. Yeah, there's really... Quite a big issue at the moment, though, for Alpha 7 is that they have headed down from El Pozzo on the Western Road. Very typical rotational path for a lot of teams. But Tiamba's behind them in El Pozzo. Twisted Minds just passed Monte Nuevo. Team Falcons are in front of them currently. And there is quite limited rotational paths through Minas del Valle, right? So I think for this team, they've got to be very cautious remaining behind these ridge sides. You know, you can rotate in very interesting manners in this location, but it requires you to scale these large mountains at the end of the day, which isn't always the most fun for some of these teams. And I think right now, what Alpha 7 will try to do is gather as much information as possible. But I do think that they're at the front of what is becoming quite a large queue. Circle, the largest percentage shrink we see in PUBG Mobile Esports, just about to pop phase two of Miramar. Los Leones, a major feature in this current zone. We'll see if it does take us that way. In fact, wow. it keeps Los Leones in, but it also encircles La Bandita, and the hills to the north of Los Leones will be the major focal point. Yeah, the, the wheels will be spinning furiously on Gladiator's vehicles right now. There will be burnt rubber because they are most likely going to take a very different approach to this game. An eastern shift over towards the uh, over towards Minas Generales. This is a really smart move from them if they want to head towards La Bandita Crater and play from that top side. The Infinity IQ is one of the only other teams heading down towards Impala into that location. Obviously, the eastern side of La Bandita is pretty open, but playing on that ridge edge towards La Bandita Crater is still a smart move. And I think at this point in time in the game, with this being such a hard shift, over towards that northeast side. Gladiators, obviously coming live to you from Riyadh, they should be thinking to themselves that, you know, a, a smart move would be to head towards that northern side. It's unlikely there's going to be a lot of teams there. I find it surprising that 628 have actually managed to make their way up towards this location before Gladiators have pulled the trigger on the decision. Three players, remember, for 628, though, so maybe a little bit less of a roadblock than maybe they would have otherwise encountered. Still, as you say, a fast, direct approach from 628, and that's what you'd like to see, is what we've praised teams for so far for adapting and developing into over the last half a year or so, and making sure that you're getting these down pat is so, so important. For 628, it seems like they've nailed it. Yeah, I think if they're on the seven, they're pretty happy about this one because <laughs> you can see on your screen at the moment, Twisted Mind and above them, Tiamba, both had the exact same reaction that I did to this circle, which is 
break east quickly just turn the vehicle around let's make over towards this location so alpha 7 who took a very rickety approach over to Masera, feels unnecessary for them at this point in time but it has removed a lot of teams that would be pushing them forward at the end of the day and um, bustling up against them down towards that south side we do have fireflux solke jumps over to the other side of the party bus will take shots and that's one down for Team Falcon straight away, who are ahead of them on the road tape, but losing one player like that will weaken them significantly. Fireflux are in the main peloton of teams in these uh, crucially placed spots, right? The points so close separating uh, between them. Three points for Fireflux. Well, actually, only one point now when you add in the eliminations behind D plus Kier. Sixth to fifth place, blank. That's a $15,000 jump. So that's one point separates them right now. Every single team in that peloton is so primed and ready to go. They've only got two more entries to make themselves known, though. Only two more shots in the chamber. And you've got to hit as close to the mark as possible if you want to challenge off against some of the top teams in the world here at the PMWI. Ooh, I do not enjoy this circle. I think a lot of the teams won't enjoy this circle either. Over towards our eastern side, we have pretty open ground. It is playable to an extent. You most likely will want to just stick on the edges, though. For Gladiators, they'll have a comfortable time over towards the north side on Labandita because they can play on these ridge sides and peek over the top. In the meantime, Vampire, Ravenclaw looking for a little bit more here. See... What's happened here is they made the mistake of going near Tony K uh, and have uh, taken a knock for their trouble. Sarah does get rest, however, for Reject Tokyo. Still what? Catch some bullets, stray across the way. Cheeky little headshot there. Ravenclaw still firing out all directions. Vampire on the south of this next circle, the hills. Where they've been able to stay for quite a while, doing quite well for the vampires. Yeah, they are in a position that is surrounded on all edges by teams looking to break the 200 point mark during this game which is pretty unbelievable to, unbelievable to me and i think with the point sponge they've been it's what has created this ridiculous amount of points that splits 10th place up towards third place at this point in time it allows anyone to just have a really good game and immediately jump themselves up by seventy five thousand dollars Team Falcons, however, go down in 16th here on the fifth game. Here on Miramar, Rosemary on the roof. Gets taken shots out here by Regiosio. Back to the garden. Rosemary drops off the top of the roof there. Will not get knocked, though. Stay safe. Box Gaming, however, not so lucky. Duck, drawn, both taking the knee on the far side of the road from back up as well. Really, really hard to go for these reses with Forest peppering through as well. You've got to imagine that you're just going to have to let your team be cut in half here for Box. A difficult position for them to be in. In the defilade they hold currently. Luckily, there's no players up in the buildings to their back, but that's more than likely going to change very soon. Yamba took to wait. Towards a compound on the western side of La Bandita. Most teams will struggle with La Bandita with the fact that they allow teams to get a little bit too close. It has what it has been what has caused a lot of problems in the past right now. Gladiators are looking to take as much space on the northern side as possible. For D plus Kia, it takes a nade over that side and Fabian goes down, but two DBSs crest the ridge side. Just Quan G takes another nade Ooh. and it pops just a bit too short there. Rez needed onto Favian to keep themselves up as four. Fireflux are just over that ridge. They don't need to overextend here for D plus Kier. They've already done the damage, but Forrest steps too close. And Gosu recalls his teammate. The slowdown is good. It forces D plus Kier to take their time to regather. And that means that Gosu can get back on his feet. They can have two nades getting cooked at the same time and try and instant burst someone. Catch now. Fireflux uh -oh. spots Gosu. Quan G as well with the DBS. Immediately tries to get into cover, but I think Catch already spotted him before. Pulls the pin on the grenade and looks to end Quan G's life. Reject Tokyo chiming in with a third party onto D plus Kia as well, but Fireflux in the dominant position on this fight. Box will be eliminated. 15th place on the match. Four eliminations now on the cards for Fireflux. They are in that peloton too. They will look to try and push towards the top. D plus Kia, a pretty 
big opportunity now for Fireflux with the knocks that come through. They need to be a little bit quicker with this. Maybe push up. If they can find one of these knocks on the cross, it'll be absolutely massive for them because D plus Kia is directly in their path towards a circle. Not finding that and now allowing D plus Kia to reset has really slowed Fireflux down because all the heals will be coming through. All Solus can do is try and get further up the road here. That's the smartest decision. Whilst D plus Kia go for the reset, Ketch gets a little bit closer and will start unleashing smokes towards these windows. Fireflux want to push for more. Get through into this circle. D plus Kia's sightlines getting systematically denied. Soulless from the high ground. Will be able to spot out Osal's window for D plus Kia. And Vampire do have some cheeky little off angles. We've seen Reject Tokyo also chime in onto this position. So potential for this to get very messy. This was really well done from Fireflux. I think they realized that it's taken a little bit too much time. So. Smoked out some of these windows, smoked out some of the sight lines, moved further up the road here into position. In the meantime, Alpha 7 sending over towards GK now. This is a really important fight for us to look out for. Alpha 7 has had pretty good performances here on Miramar before. And they've been slowly edging their way into the circle for a long, long while. They will start to unleash. Ragnar's already down. Revo gets through. Dangerous opposition now gets too close for comfort for Gike. Molotov to isolate the fight into one side. Satan and Hope both going to be able to train their barrels that way. Slowing down the fight, though, is the only effect of that Molotov in the end. And they'll have to give ground here to Alpha 7. Mafioso takes a little bit of damage from a nade. The air burst is there as well from Gike. But they're not getting knocks in response. With Ragnar falling fully, the southwest side opened up for Alpha 7. The push looking good. Over the top, another. Not quite finding the mark. Molotov forwards. Gike tried to stem the flow. They've just splurged too much utility at the start of this fight of Gike. Everything was sent through right at the beginning. And they could have slowed things down massively. In the meantime, D plus Kia actually get the better start here versus Fire Flux. But already Sol K takes a little bit of damage, but a refrag has been found here onto D plus Kia. Saden, one of the biggest clutch players coming through from All Stars, looks to try and get something similar. But look at this, two players down. It's Carillo and Revo. These are the players you do not want down on their knees. Mafioso, though, has been performing today, and he'll need to try and channel that for the rest of this engagement here. Two players, and one of them descending three, in fact, on the top floor, forced up there. But now they can start to try and get these flanks. Mafioso catches one, falling, catches them sleeping as well, and wants to put more hurt down range. The reses may be being enacted here for set attacks, but in oh Mafioso God. goes, finds a second, needs to find the third. Where is he going to look for it? Behind him? No, it's upstairs still and has got the backup from a teammate. The res did come through. Alpha 7 are still all alive. Satan, last standing for Geeky. Mafioso, Senatex are both on the ground floor, both pushing together as a team, as one. Alpha 7 trying to slow it down, but will not be able to stem the tide of Alpha 7. Geeky fall, and Alpha 7, four points on the board, crucially on their chase for the spot occupied by 628. Mafioso, the Virtuoso with the M4 there, really hits the decent sprays as they jump out the windows. They thought they had wings, but they were quickly clipped by him. And it's really, really important that he came up clutch there because Revo is their close range specialist. The fact that he'd gone down with Carrillo is such bad news. And Mafioso's had his ups and downs during this tournament, but he had to be up there. That was the most important moment of this tournament for this lad. And he has performed absolutely brilliantly. They are going to be clapping him on the back because they needed that one. Fireflux clawing their way up the rock face of the tables here. Having lost Lutz, though, will take the momentum out of them somewhat. Six eliminations found already on the game in their scrap on the southeast side with D plus Kia as it continues to boil away at their resources. Fireflux trying to spread out here. Solus repositions out wide. Fabian will see this, will spot this fully, but can't take the shots just yet. He's out in the open, does not have the cover to take it. You're yeah, sending forward there, allowing to have an anchor point. The rest of the team to get towards, and Fabian doesn't want to have that whatsoever. 628, to eight, they'll arrive. Ooh. And just as they arrive, they depart from the lobby. That is big news, Blank, for second place. That puts Alpha 7 six points behind 628. 
and they'll want to find those this match. This is their opportunity from the south side. They have to cross further. Soulcate down, knocked. D plus Kia trying to trade it off. Vampire have still got oversight on all of it. The fact they're currently five eliminations strong at the moment is ridiculous. They did have a strong position at the start of this game and continue to push through. There's a lot of reaches over on this terrain itself towards the middle that you can play in. It's going to force a lot of teams closer together towards that end game. In the meantime, Gladiators are doing a really, really good job at isolating this push that has come through from the Infinity. The Gladiators knew that this would come through at some point from one of the Eastern teams to try and find some kind of refuge. You move directly towards the West side. Alter Ego, who's set up in the Ridge side, as well as Fireflux or Vampires, because they're just going to take shots towards you. This is a very good play from Gladiators. Yes, they've taken themselves out of the scenario for quite some time, but it's given them a very good amount of space towards that north side. Next circle, though, will define a lot. Currently, DRS would have one of the strongest positions if we move over towards the western side with a huge amount of open ground around them that they can play from, but we head towards Ooh. the middle. And what an interesting place to finish out this game. This is going to be a lot of mechanical skill required from these players. Good utility remaining. And a lot of teams have spent so much getting in towards this position. All you can hope for Gladiators in particular is that they've been able to pick up a huge amount of utility of their own. And that might just be the kicker in the end game job. They need to keep that pressure on, take care of Ferrari from Infinity IQ. And then they can play that ridge line on the southwest side of the Labendita Crater to move forwards, to gain information, which is yep. what they will be lacking from isolating themselves away from the lobby, to get that scouting done. They get rid of Ferrari. <laughs> the nade does find the knock on to Meku, though. That should be easily enough. Resible on the northeast side. You can see that ridge line now spanning out in front of them. That They'll have to summit and start to peek out. Yeah, I think for I think for Gladiator as well, and purely just in terms of the utility, talking about that again, with the ridge size you can see, you can understand almost straight away that grenades are going to be of such importance. So a lot of times these teams will just be hiding around small ridges. There's no windows, there's no doors, there's no rooms to avoid those types of grenades. So you can just go for these massive nade plays on towards these positions. Cal Dailan does avoid that one because of the building, but this one around the side should get it. Yeah, that was just a couple of the pickups that Gladiators were able to find to get rid of Infinity IQ. The Thorn in the side, Fireflux. They are getting torn to pieces here. I think it's just Ketch now on the east side, close to Vampire. That's huge! Very that difficult. Huge. Very, very difficult to last long under the gaze of Vampire. That is massive from Gladiators. Picking up Rosemary from Alter Ego, having to move down towards that eastern side. That is a big, big pickoff coming through from Gladiators. Now they can comfortably move down towards the south, but Mafioso still going strong. Finally gets taken down, but it's DRS off in the distance, just taking these pot shots at long range. Only one player now, Carrillo, for Alpha 7 to try and keep them still alive in their chase for the second place. But they are taking bullets and that will be it. Stalwart put a stop to their run. They're five points behind, 6-2-8, but Gladiators are still in the game in a prime position on the northeast side. Blank, they've already got five eliminations and they are only three points behind where Alpha 7 sit currently. Ravenclaw spots out catch and it's just three points, but Potato's able to pick up one of them. And Gladiators right now with this circle, they can look down towards the southwest. This is really good map knowledge at the moment. They understand that there should be teams in these locations they scouted out earlier that will just be sitting in here. Because as we said before, DRS around that zone, it is just open plains. It's so difficult to get towards that position. If we continue moving towards the western side, even if DRS's compound comes a little bit outside the circle, by that point, they should have done enough damage to finish out this game. Twisted Minds. Have put in a shift today, Blank. We've we've waited too long to see it, unfortunately, but they've had some somewhat decent engagements. We saw their Sanok, they took down vampires. They've managed to stand up to teams that we thought they wouldn't be able to. Maybe this is a little bit too tall of an order, though, to push past Tianba. Ah, this is what I'm talking about, man. The circle actually just shifts over towards the western side. Yes, it doesn't 100% encompass DRS's position, but a lot of teams are going to be having to crunch themselves towards the eastern edge now. Unless you make one hell of a crazy push over towards DRS's compound and manage to get up towards the wall, 
It is so, so difficult to assault this spot. Fnatic, though, finding Ravenclaw down towards that south side. Meku constantly is checking towards this location of the map as well, holding on the east, whereas Gladiators were just poking towards this engagement between Tiamba as well as Twisted Minds. Rolkis moves forward. Trying to get a little bit closer to the fire. Warm the hands, get ready for it. Seven teams remain now, Blank, in our penultimate match. The first of two Miramars that we've yet to see. Another top three finish, remember, for Vampire would break another record for 15k extra added to their prizes. And that's what they'll be looking for here. They're in a good spot for it. Crypto goes down first as Ren opens up with the auto shotty. Looking for more as well as a second knock goes over to Easy. YDD picks that one up, and it's just Rokis remaining. Gladiators move away from this position, taking a little bit too long. Rolkis, last alive, and Tiamba able to get away with it. With four players all still left alive here as well. Really important. Stalwart all inside the fielded area. And Tony K sending the grenades over the top. I was going to ask if you think this nade hits blank, but it's Tony K. He gets something done. Top very, very low there. Needing the rescue from the teammates. And Schweppes gets spotted by Potato from Alter Ego, who are moving in a little bit further north. Another nade over the top is on target. And now Potato has drawn the ire of Vampire Esports from the south. It's so, so difficult to play this position. Eventually, you're going to get pushed out into open zone. In the meantime, Alter Ego doing a really good job to keep Gladiators back at bay. Matic moves through. Meku has a nade in hand, looking to send it over towards Alter Ego. But all those shots towards Tiamba, that's made them very angry. And they're looking to finish off the rest of the Gladiators squad. Nade goes oh. through, and that's just it. That is disaster for Gladiators. They were looking good to try and chase up towards that second place, but it just... Stayed too long. They did not make that push. Stone, though, a massive nade over the top. Completely dispatches the members coming through from Alter Ego. And DRS maybe get a little bit too big for their boots as they get close towards Stalwart and nades come through that way. Rules maybe looking to return to the back to the rest of the squad as Delta takes a knee. Will go down. Very difficult to get the res as well. Three eliminations. And four teams remain now in the final stage eight. Vampire with three. They have lost one. Vampires here looking to get into that top three. If they hit that now, that's another 15K underneath the belt just from the record break alone. The top three finishes, but Rules gets put down. Goodness Ooh. me. Action moving up now, just running across the field. It's the best he can do and hoping that Kante cannot hit him because his legs are swinging so fast to get up towards this truck. Yante behind the hay bale. Smoke blooms to give him a little bit of leg room to oh, gain that no speed. Way. That's no way they, they haven't figured out that he's in there. They aren't taking shots out that way either. But with Nerzed playing up close to the monster truck, action just gets on out of there. Yo! Delta's down in the meantime, and he can go for the rundown. Action bursts through, and Yante oh gets caught up in it. Vampire put a stop to the carnage, and Killer's left wondering what just happened. They roll straight on through, and Vampire ladder up an extra 15k under the belt for their ninth top three finish. Guaranteed now, Blank. Vampire have done so much this tournament. DRS with one player left standing, and Tiamba looking to try and close out their tournament in style after a disappointing first couple of days. Yeah, really big step up from Tiamba so far. It has been a fairly quiet game, but YDD with four eliminations. What a fantastic result. DRS similarly trying to bring things back into the fold. They've been much more aggressive. It's what we requested from them day two in the All-Stars. has just taken them a while to adjust to the level of teams here. DRS step up, down goes Schweppes and Vampires are now in a bit of a struggle bus situation. Not in terms of tournament, but certainly this game. Maybe they should have let the monster truck run a little bit more wild because they lose a player to it. The killer goes down and Stone steps up for two. Wow. Giante falls to Tianba on the off angle and now Vampire Want to put another chicken dinner up on the board, maybe, if Schweppes can get back to their feet, but they're 2v4 right now. Tony K still in action. Nade over the top gets the flush on stoned. Molotov over the red, but he's already passed it. Tony K has more in the barrel, though. Will find one. Now has to trade off for a second. Gets There's a second no shot. pick. Now it's just one player, and it will not be enough, though.
And Tianpa finds a second chicken dinner on the day. And it looked hard as well towards the end there versus the two players. Tony K and Stu.